feel that everyone will just um we'll just give it a minute and to, to see how we go. Um, and thanks for if you're comfortable turning on your cameras, that would that would be great. If you if you're not, no stress at all. T totally fine. But if you are, um, uh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, okay, I think we'll get underway if we have other people join us. We do. If we don't, hey to pie. All good. Um, Claire, thank you for your message. Totally, totally get that you don't necessarily want to be here. <laughs> Have your camera on right now. That is all fine for now. Um, kia ora, I'm Bronwyn. I'm from a group called the Hobson Street Theatre Company, which is a theatre company that's run in collaboration with Auckland City Mission. Um, in the next little while, I'm just going to talk a little bit about who we are, what we do, and, and how we make work together, really. And I also have a few little games and exercises we could potentially do if people are up for it as well. Um, but I would love to, to start off with just hearing a little bit about um, why, who you are and who, and, and talk a little bit about who I am. Um, and so I'm just going to do a little quick icebreaker, which is a classic one that many of you will have done before. Um, I would love everyone to, to, to say two true things about themselves and one lie. Um, I'll start with myself. So two, two true things, one lie. I was born in Rotorua. I have one brother and I once got arrested for trying to not pay a bus ticket. That's me. You can all, and we'll go around and you can guess in a minute which is true and which is a lie. Um, Emily, can I, can I throw to you if you're comfortable sharing? Quickly trying to think of something. <laughs> um, I have, I'm Emily. I've been married twice. I have a cat and I was born in Lower Hutt. Sorry, I uh, guess I was on mute. <laughs> Sorry, two from Claire. Thank you. Um, uh, Claire is sisters on TV. Claire has epilepsy and Claire is eating lunch. Well, um, all right. I'm going to guess that Claire, that maybe your sister was on TV, but isn't at the moment. Maybe that is the lie. That's that's my guess. Emily, do you want to have a go at guessing? I'm pretty sure she's eating lunch, so it's one of the other two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Emily, do you want to guess my ones? I can't remember where we are. I'm so nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> It's not a test. It's honestly not a test. It's not a test. I said I was born in Rotorua. I've got a brother and I was once almost arrested, arrested for uh, not paying a bus, a bus ticket when I got on a bus. I'm going to say the lie is you were born in Rotorua. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was born in Hamilton. Uh, not just down the road. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Um, Claire, do you want to guess Emily's ones? Yeah, tell me, Emily, tell them me again. I married twice, have a cat, and was born in Lower Hutt. Married twice. Is, is that the lie? That's the yeah. lie. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you, everyone. Once um, is enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're enough. Um, and I, for, I forgot to put my third one. I was like typing and eating, and I didn't put my third one in, which is um, I uh, 
I come from Southland, but I live in Wellington. I reckon. I reckon you do come from Southland. Mm -hmm. mm, the other ones you had. Is it that your sister is was on TV, but maybe isn't at the moment? <clears throat> is that true? Well, I'm realizing. <laughs> I spent all this time trying to figure out what my lie is. I just told you three truths. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was like typing, typing. I went, hang on, don't forget to put a lie in. <laughs> and then I pressed it into my mistake. And then I went, oh God. Yeah. So don't yeah. worry. This is um people do that all the time. I've done it before, you know, like it's it's uh it's it's not really the prince, you know, it's not really an important part of it, you know? It's, That's right. Um, yeah. There's my introduction. You get to know me. Truth teller. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and hey, we just, we've got another couple of people in the call who are um, the, the admin techs in the background. So I'm not going to uh, make them join in with us just because I know they've all got hundreds of other things that they are keeping an eye on at the moment as well. Um, so, hey, thanks thanks for joining me. We're going to have a super casual session because it's a small group. So feel, f uh, instead of um, me talking heaps, which I'm doing at the moment, um, I would love it to be more of a conversation. And part of the reason we're in this Zoom room rather than the main conference platform is, is exactly because of that. Um, we, I come from a theatre company. <laughs> It's very normal for us to sit around and, and talk um, and to have conversation um, rather than it be just me talking. And, and the nature of our group, it make, that makes it even more important. So Hobson Street Theatre Company is run in partnership with the Auckland City Mission. Um, we have been going since 2010. Everyone in the group uses the services of the mission in some way. So that may be that they are accessing a social worker. It might be they're accessing the medical center there. It might be that they're coming in for meals. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons. And actually, they have zero importance um, to the group why, why they're connected to the mission. So that is never anything we ask people. The important thing is that people want to come and do uh, acting or performance and that they're a part of the, they want to be a part of the group so for quite a long time we've we've just run one group with the mission um, in the last year I'm saying that kind of tentatively because we all know the last year has been quite interrupted um, we've been running some outreach groups with the assistance of funding from the Ministry of Culture and Heritage thank you um, government COVID support, um, which means we're running outreach groups, which are super casual, super fun, um, in a variety of dis different places. So not just the city mission, but our core performance company is connected to the mission. Um, and that's our, that's our home base. Um, because of the nature of that group, uh, it's, it's super important that we have lots of dialogue and we have lots of conversation and also really fundamental to, to our underpinnings is that we all can walk in as equals. So if you are someone who, who's experienced homelessness, you've probably experienced quite a lot of um, inequality um, and inequity. And so working within our group we, tr we try not to replicate that we don't obviously we don't always get it 100 percent right but it, we try super hard to um to not replicate those kind of structures that people are experiencing in, in other parts of their life so one of the big parts of that is as i said that we really acknowledge that everyone walks in there with existing skills and knowledge and experience. And it's not about me as the director sitting there going, hey, I know everything. You're going to listen to me and you're going to be quiet and just receive it. It's 
it's really based on a, um, a, a dialogue means just between two, but it's based on a conversation between all of us. Um, part of this is based on the principles of a technique called the theatre of the oppressed, which um, do either of you know about, because I won't tell you about it if you know about it already. Um, a little bit. Claire's nodding. Yes, she does. Emily, do you, what's, okay, I'm, I'll, I'll do a little <laughs> bit of it and I can also share some links if you want to do some more reading about it. But essentially it's a theory and way of making theatre um, that was developed in the 1970s by a theatre maker in Brazil called Augusto Boal. Um, and he based his work on the work of an educational theorist called Paulo Freire, who wrote a really influential book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And that book said, no one can learn something. Children in school are not learning things if the teacher's just talking at them. Um, what it needs to be is that we're learning from each other, we learn things together, um, which is now, you know, quite a contemporary educational theory that lots of lots of schools are working out how they incorporate that into their into their learning as well. Um, Claire, have you done a bit of work with that this kind of work before? What's what's your experience? I did a bit of theatre of oppressed when I was at university. Oh, cool. Um, but um, I detoured more to um, so, uh, socio-drama and playback theatre. Oh, yeah. So it's sort of in that field, but just sort of over that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so as you know, then you know a little bit about it, but I'll keep, I'll keep talking a little bit more for Emily's. Um, so Emily knows we were at too. Um, so it, so it has a whole bunch of different techniques that I won't go into here because we don't, we're not, it's not a theory of the oppressed session. Um, but really at its core is that the audience can be just as involved in the performance as the actors as well. So that the audience have quite a lot of agency in the performance um, and that all the work is, is angled towards some kind of, change you know like some kind of social change that's that's with that name which I have to say is not like a definitely I think that name is um it's all it's of its time you know I and mean, lots of people don't necessarily use it now but it's um that's what it is um yeah and sorry my dog is barking because <laughs> my neighbor's come to the door to take him for a walk but he'll be okay um so one of the one of the really famous examples of theatre of the oppressed, just so you understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about, is something called forum theatre. And in that, the actors create a play. Um, in that play, there's a protagonist who fails bravely at some kind of challenge, and that could be something really personal, but it's usually something personal that has a kind of structural element to it, you know. Um, and then the play is restarted and the audience can stop the play at any time and say, hey, this character should, should make a different decision. And not only that, then the audience member goes up on the stage and acts that out. So suddenly you have all these audience members coming up and performing. And I'm very much simplifying it for the sake of today, but that's, that's the kind of the gist of it. And obviously there's lots of techniques to get that audience feeling like they're okay. And those are things that Claire, you'd be familiar with, with playback as well of encouraging people to contribute, right? So um, in terms of kind of how that works in, in, in Hobson Street is that um, we also really, what's super important for us is that unfortunately, the reality of people who've experienced homelessness in New Zealand means that a lot of people are Maori or Pacific. So we also try and work with, well, we don't try, we do, we work with what is that 
um, tea kanga that's underpinning what we're doing as well. And um, I'm not Māori, I'm Pākehā, but we have within our group lots of people with really amazing knowledge in that. So they they have set that. Um, and the two big things is that we kind of centre around manakitanga, both for so looking after each other, but also looking after our audience. Um, and for nangatanga, which is um, we're responsible to each other, but we're responsible to the group as a whole as well. And we support each other in that as well. Does anyone have any questions on that or um, observations? You don't have to. I just want to stop and give you a chance to, to ask if you do. Cool. Um, so, so again, coming back to that idea of, you know, everyone is in this room with lots of skills and what does that actually look like? Like, how do we actually make work? Um, we, so if we're making a work, um, a new show, we sit down and have a series of hui. So usually that's two, potentially three. Um, everyone says, hey, I've got this idea. I was thinking about this. Um, this is something that's kind of been running around my head. Um, and we just keep talking about it until we land on something that sounds like a good idea for a show. Um, so most of our work is devised. So that means everyone in the group is, is creating it together rather than us learning a script that has been brought in. Um, and partly that's because people in the group have amazing ideas for stories they want to tell. Um, and partly it's for practical reasons that we have people with like varying ranges of um, comfort around literacy, um, people with varying ranges of um, physical um, like uh, brain injuries that they're dealing with, you know. So sometimes learning a script becomes something super challenging and actually just unpleasant, you know, because if you're really struggling to remember something, that's that's suddenly all it is about rather than actually performing. Um, so that's, yeah, that's something that we really consider as well. Um, yeah, so we have this series of hui, we talk about it, um, we land on a topic. Some of those topics have been quite um, full on. So a few years ago, everyone said, we want to do a show about racism and what that, what that has been like for us or what that is like for us in our everyday life. Um, we've also done a show about a ghost in an op shop, you know, so it's like quite a range of different work. Um, and again, part of that underpinning of recognizing people's skills is to go, we're not always going to make shows about homelessness. In fact, hardly ever have we made a show about being homeless. And largely that's because that's often been a really crap time in people's lives. So why would they want to revisit that all the time? And I am certainly not going to ask people to, to keep revisiting that if that's something they don't want to do. That's not to, to deny the kind of effect of that on people's lives or to ignore it, but um, it's super important that the actors in the group they make the choices around what the shows are, not, not me. Um, you know, we make those, um, and that's why we have quite a lot of conversation about it right at the start. Um, we also spend heaps of time just playing games with each other. So we, um, especially when we're going through that practice of making a show, um, at the start, we do a lot of the theatre-based games. Um, and sometimes that really helps with clarifying ideas, but more often than not, it just helps with setting up those trust relationships between each other. Um, and Claire, I think that's probably something you'd be super familiar with, with some of the work you've done as well, right? Um, Emily, have you, were, have you had much experience with theatre before or live performance? 
Uh, no, not since college. Awesome. Go good. Usually I'm good at it, apparently, but I, I didn't go anywhere with it. <laughs> Do you know, I was just about to say, often the people that say, I haven't done it for ages, turn out mm. to be incredible performers. You know, <laughs> they just... <laughs> so often that's happened um what is it what questions can I answer for you what can I yeah what can I clarify or what are you what are you interested in knowing more about uh yesterday you spoke about the great event you guys are going to overseas so how did that come about and um and and then all the stuff around generating that and and, and getting to it and yeah yeah, yeah of course so I think that was probably um, Sally, who's our producer, who would have spoken about that because um, she was at the session yesterday. Um, so uh, Emily, just in case you weren't there, we we have been invited to an international community arts festival in Rotterdam. Mm, uh, I remember, I was here. Okay, cool. Okay, yep. cool. Um, I won't <laughs> that tell was you. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I noticed that festival when I was you know, looking online for things. Uh, I can't even remember exactly what. Probably about probably about seven years ago. And then um, Sally and I applied for some funding to Creative New Zealand to go to the festival just as attendees, just, just to see it. So we were lucky enough to go in 2017. To that, to that festival and it was pretty amazing as you can imagine just people from all over the world doing really incredible work um, of theatre, dance, music, visual arts, all, all kind of things um, and then the next year they were asking for proposals for, for the next festival in 2020 so I sent a proposal in um, and that proposal was around working with a group in Rotterdam. So again, when we tour, we really love to be able to make local connections with groups there. So that's another really important thing that we want to do because we also know this kind of work doesn't happen in lots of places. So trying to meet other groups and potentially spark something is also something we want to do. Um, in Rotterdam, uh, there is an incredible centre that's like the Auckland City Mission called Tullerkirk. They have a whole suite of creative programmes that happen there. So the festival in Rotterdam put us in touch with them. They were keen to work with us. And we started exchanging videos and some um, pieces of writing and some poetry. And then, of course, um, the day we were meant to fly out in 2020 was the day of our first lockdown. So. We didn't go, um, but then they're having another festival next year. It's on a three three year cycle, um, and again we we reworked the proposal we had for twenty twenty, sent it off to them, um, and then um, also did a funding application to Creative New Zealand, and really happy that they were able to fund fund the trip. So that's we we're off there next year. So. That's it kind of in short. Um, do you, is there other questions around that, Claire, that you're interested in? What's the festival in Rotterdam called? Ah, so it's called the International Community Arts Festival. I will, I will send you a link because it's not the easiest to find um, because a lot of different groups seem to have those, that same um, acronym. You go, I've put it in the chat. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so have have a look at it. They um they do they've just got a new website and so I, I'm not gonna spend minutes scrolling through it now, but there used to be a, a little bit of work online as well. So I'm presuming that's the same if they're on their new website, that it's a place to share work internationally as well. Yeah. Um, there is a few other different groups around the world that create theatre with people who've experienced homelessness and um, 
we are in conversation with a group in Australia as well, just to one day we hope to collaborate with them. Um, but obviously all of this costs money. It's really important for us that we pay our actors when they're engaging in professional level work like this as well. So we always want to have some funding that we can we can pay them for. We have a, a flat payment structure. So everyone in the group gets paid the same hourly rate when they're working. Um, again, harking back to those reasons I was talking about earlier as well. Um, also, normally, usually I would not talk about the group just by myself, again, for all those other reasons, like normally there'd be at least two of us. Um, but we have got rehearsals for a new show and it's it's quite a full on few days for everybody. So that's why you have to listen to me <laughs> blar on at the moment. Yeah. Um, what else can I what else can I tell you? What else are you curious about? Um, does it just I just briefly looked at it does it feel quite inclusive taking this work over to Rotterdam do you think I, that's such a good question I think for me that was a big part of wanting to work with a local group because definitely I think at any festival right the nature of a festival is that the short intense bursts of of um, time and energy and it's really easy to go there, do your show and, and leave again and not have anything, not have a, a deeper connection than that. So we're actually hoping that we can try and make the budget work so we get there a, a full week before the festival starts to have time to work with the local group. And then the performance we do will be at their space and in collaboration with them. I think it's... Look, it's super interesting going to a country where there's um, a different, you know, their, their concepts of things like, they don't have a concept of like, how do we work with our indigenous community, you know, so that's, that's a really, that's a really different um, thing for, the, for them to, to, to think about as well, and um, at the festival, it was it felt weird to me to like not have an opening uh, ritual of some description to welcome everyone in, because that's that's just not how they do things there. It's just we've started, let's go, you know, <laughs> that's that's it, and not oh. not because it's um, not you know it, it's just different, and that's that's how that's how they're doing things, yeah. So that inclusivity, I think, is it just it looks different in the Netherlands, you know, and in well in Rotterdam. I'm not, and I've been there once, you know, so it's my very limited snapshot of what I observed at that one festival. Yeah. I really love that, Bronwyn, because there's um something really interesting um, that you're gonna find when you go over there. And and I think if you get that chance to go the week before, it's gonna be so great for you it's sort of like annual team of people it's that's the um the real strength because everything's relationship building isn't it for your yeah. whole team so and every opportunity that will come for them from this experience from what they learn will launch pad whatever they've got here into their vision of how they move forward into other projects um but i love that you highlighted how we hold ritualistic spaces for ourselves how we hold because um, a lot of artistic spaces when it comes to performative it's it's not just like the cultural aspects of it but it is how do how do we hold artistic space and and how are we communicating our artistic voices through our rituals how we're we meeting ourselves in your spaces so you're talking about cultural trade when you go there and these are such wonderful things to identify like before you go so that you're able to trade those things or trade experiences uh, when you're there so that everyone's, um, their experiences go from this kind of close thing to a, like a whoa, like this. And then not only is it whoa, but it goes whoa, out like this. And then they kind of over there going whoa. Yeah. And they don't even realize why we're going whoa, but we're just whoa we're soaking it all up and soaking it all in and this is crazy 
and then it's like you get to be able to go hey what do you think it is how come these things are, are happening and you can tie it all down to it's our rituals it's our processes it's how we exchanged our our fundamental processes it's how we've done these it's how they've done theirs it's how we've met each other because the wonderful thing about those things and when you go on exchange and particularly if you go as a group is that you get to see how someone else is doing theirs and then you don't want to interrupt on someone else's process you want to celebrate their process and go oh how can we learn from that does that change how we do our process no I don't think it does change how we do our process and that's a beautiful thing like there's just going to be such a rich learning thing around what what can we take now I mean it's so good that you've been there because you can be like what can we take as a group over as a sort of way of being it's so fundamental it's great it's yeah like, yeah thank you and that's such a great way of explaining it and I love that idea of the the, the cascading woes as we as we go through it um which we're all going to have it's, it's going to be it's going to be amazing I think yeah you can't really put voice to it because what it is is it's um it's being in process yeah. of you having a lived experience and when you're having the lived experience of being in the moment of being somewhere and you're watching something and then all of a sudden you go whoa I can't believe I just went to this rehearsal at Holson Street and that's nuts to me that I'm in Rotterdam yeah you know and they like the, the connecting dots for that it's not even going to land until they're there and that's like the first whoa and then it's like oh wow look at what we're able to exchange second whoa and then it just kind of woes out from there and then because then you become ambassadors what are we doing with our ambassadorship but it's it's how we hold that humbly it's not even we don't have to change who we are it's that we just be who we are that's the power of it you know that's yeah. the beauty of it and that's how like if we just get to be really present in our like ourselves and then the rituals that's what I say like I picked up exactly what you were saying before and it's like yeah it's just what we do it's how we do it. it's what we've been experiencing it's how we're holding that space and those experiences it's, it's Ah, it's magic. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's something really fundamental about that idea of ritual and what that looks like and um and and how we develop it as well, right? Because it's not always it's not fixed, it's it's ever changing actually, um, in response to like you're saying, who we are, who the other people are, or the context we're in as well. Kia ora, Janet. I'm Bronwyn. I, we've met before, Janet. Um, yeah. Oh, Janet, you're you're on mute. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, Janet. You might need to just come off mute. Yeah. Oh, apologies for being so late. Um, I I couldn't get here any earlier. So. You're all good. You're all good. Look, we because we're a small group. I've I've slightly thrown. The, um, the, the plan out the window um, and we've been having more of a conversation about things but um, uh, the other, what I was also going to do is play some online online games and there's some of the games that we use to um, in our theatre process but I'm also happy to just keep having a conversation and it's really up to you three what, what you think is most valuable or what you'd prefer in our last 10 minutes any any thoughts i've probably got a question yeah go okay um yeah. i've only just become a tutor having been part of a recovery program i guess for a bit of a meltdown yeah. um and i do art but um I think there's a good thing with theatre there and getting people involved and up out of their seats. Um, and I could see some of them would quite enjoy it. Where would you start? <laughs> what would it be? Theatre games or what would you look at doing first? Look, I'd, I'd start really simply and also acknowledging that um, lots of people will say that speaking in public is their 
is their number one fear, right? Yes. So a lot of people <laughs> are terrified of speaking in public. And that relates to, to performance and acting as well. So starting with some really gentle games to show people firstly that they can have fun. Yeah. Thing. And I'm happy to, um, if you're happy to send me your email, Emily, I can I can send you some links to resources. That would be lovely. Have a look at as well. Okay. I highly recommend this. I was looking this at this book earlier as I was finalizing plans. Um, this isn't this is an amazing book. Oh no, the blurring is not going to show you. <laughs> it's called Almost. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Let me unblur. Um, it's called Games for Actors and Non-Actors. It's by Augusto Boal. Um and the, the wonderful thing about that is it really concentrates, it's got a hundred book, a hundred games in there, more than a, you know, it's got lots and lots of games. Um, but it's very much about how do you make it, um, how are you creating a process and creating those kind of rituals for people that are coming completely fresh with no performance background whatsoever. And how are you gently leading them through that process of walking and going, I don't know what this is. I'm a bit suspicious of it. I don't know if I'm going to like it. And why am I here to, oh, we just made a little scene, you know, like, oh, suddenly I've done some performing. Um, suddenly I've, I've communicated something through a theatrical process, you know. Um, and so that's, that's why I would I highly recommend that. I'm sure that you, your library will have it or you'd be able to get it on into loan for sure yeah. through the library system. Yeah. But I'm, I will, I'm going to put my email address in here as well. Um, and if you want to send me an email, um, I can send you some other links to other ideas as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what I would suggest. I think there's, there's something really fantastic about being up and moving, you know, and, and um, often people will express things that way that they're, they're not comfortable expressing in other ways. And I'm sure you're seeing this through the, is it visual arts work that you're doing? Yeah. The same thing, right? People are expressing things there that they're not saying or communicating in other ways too. Yeah. And I, I think I would like to see them interact a bit more with each other right. um I know as a member when I was going if I if I didn't get there early enough to be at the main tables and I had to sit off to the side I would just kind of withdraw into myself and not want to be there and so it would be nice to get them a little bit more supportive of each other in some way yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely and look lots of these games are really good for this because you're practicing um you're practicing things that you do in real life and you're doing it in a fun and often quite silly way. Um, it could be really confidence building for yeah. some of that we've got there that are very quiet. Look, I, yeah. I, I um, we had a guy come into the Hobson Street session years ago and when he came in, he it was amazing that he walked through the doors. It was amazing because when he came in, he would sit there with his eyes closed. Like that's how little he wanted to interact with the world mm. um and then but I was so mm. impressed that he'd actually come through the door because it must have been taking him so much bravery you know um and then he's now gone on to be an extra in tvs and tv shows um he loves acting you know he wants to keep doing it um and I'm so amazed at the progress that he's that he's made over that time and that's not all down to us at all but some of it is about that just just that kind of gentle way of, of letting people know through these kind of theater games and exercises that you can do this you know it's um yeah. it's not it's not that hard <laughs> yeah um Janet and Claire, you're both any any comments you'd like to make on that and well I'd, I'd absolutely um back you up on games for actors and non-actors it's a brilliant book yeah, yeah i've used i've used those games many many times uh, the absolute classics for a reason right the, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 um we've got a few 
We've got a few minutes. Is there any other questions? Or Janet, I'm aware you were able to join late. If there's anything, any questions Just, you um, Who else is here? Because I'm sorry, I missed introductions and okay. where people are from. And So we've got, we've got Claire and Emily, um, and they can um, probably have a quick word for themselves. Yeah. I'm Emily from um, the Kapiti Coast in Ramadi Beach, and I've just started doing um, art as an art teacher down at Te Ara Korowai. Mm. Uh, my name's Claire, and I ignite creativity using theatre and song, and I do that um, wherever there's a space, really. So all over the place and with everybody. <laughs> and, I'm going to pass it to Sandra because um, I see her on camera and uh, see if she wants to have a chat. Well, kia ora koutou. I'm Sandra Julian. I am the founder of Oaha and we are the event management team behind this digital event for the last couple oh, of days. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. right. And, awesome. and, and I'm, I work for Interacting Theatre Company in Auckland and um, I, mean, I, I, I run two, two groups, um, one in uh, Nathan Homestead in um, Manirewa and one at Mount Albert. And, um, and I also do like a kind of like every other week about an hour with a group at Geneva Healthcare in um, Sandringham um, with people with very high needs, um, mostly non-verbal. So uh, this is a real stretch for me because I'm very verbal. But, you know, it's good. It's good. I mean, I, I come out every week amazed at what we've done. Hey, we, we're almost out of time. Is there any, um, it feels like it's, really, it's super flowing by. Um, I have done maybe... 20% of what I wanted to do but actually I think with a small group it's so much better to actually just have a conversation and like I was saying earlier so much of the work we do at Hobson Street is around um, hui and it's around conversation um, it's not about me just going here's all the things you should learn them go away you know like that's, that's, and that's so I'm, I'm glad that we were able to do this zoom session because it would have felt very very alien to me doing it the other way of just presenting to a, a blank screen so thank you all. and I thank you for joining in and, and you know putting cameras on and things like that as well I know that hasn't been the case for most of the sessions so I really appreciate that too yeah any anything else in the in the last little bit please feel free to email me if you have other questions or um, comments or anything like that I'm always happy to talk to people I am in the middle of rehearsal so might not be able to reply straight away, but I will get to it. Yeah. What What are your rehearsals for? Oh, so Hobson Street Theatre is doing a show called The Dilemma, and it comes from thinking about how do we make better decisions as a society. And um, it's an interactive piece, and it's about what should we call our country? How are ah. we, we going to decide that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. great yeah where it's where fun. is it going to be performed uh we're going on tour um and then we we will be in auckland at city mission on the 19th and 20th of november yeah um it's all on our website which i'm quickly typing in at, in our last minute right oh cool. cool. All right, well, I will, um, it's been really lovely to, to meet you all and to talk Hello. and hear, hear from you and, um, yeah, have, have a conversation. So um, I'm sure we could keep going for ages, but I know there's lots of other sessions happening. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, thank you. And have a great rest of your afternoon. See you.